Hello everybody, so welcome to this introduction to Archer course. Um, I'm just going to start with, our, with a short um, initial presentation out, outlining the, the course, um, well the, the three lectures, and uh, giving a, a brief overview. So uh, reusing this material, as it says here, it's under Creative Commons and non-commercial share alike, so you're welcome to reuse the material as long as it's appropriately attributed. So in terms of this course, just to kind of say where we're coming from, what we assume is that you've got some familiarity with parallel programming, um, really as a user. So you've had some previous experience of, of running stuff on HPC systems or, or compute clusters. So we'll assume that although Archer might be new to you or, or will be new to you, you've got some experience of, of other similar or smaller systems. In particular, you might have attended the hands-on introduction to HPC course, or there is obviously this, this online an online version um, on the web pages. So um, the learning outcomes uh, on completion of this course will help you understand the Archer hardware and software environment to set you up for compiling and running your own programs on Archer and therefore porting applications to Archer. But um, more specifically, uh, one of the outcomes of this, course, of this course is you should be able to undertake this Archer driving test and the URL is there. And on successful completion, you can then apply for an account and you get up to it's about 80,000 core hours. That's uh, 1,200 kilo AUs, as we call them, uh, for a 12-month period. So that's a way of getting yourself up onto Archer um, and, um, and getting going. And the driving test is just there to demonstrate that you've attended training material like this and therefore you, you know how to use the system. So just a very quick overview of the Archer service. We'll kind of repeat this material in the coming two lectures, but just to kind of give a very brief high-level summary. The Archer partners are EPSRC, Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, and they manage the, the machine on, on behalf of the UK Research Councils. Um, the hardware is provided by Cray. We'll go into some detail as to what the hardware is. And... Um, me, I, my name is David Henty. I work at EPCC. Um, EPCC provides the service provision of the machine, which is um, doing all the systems and admin and such like operating the help desk. We have some input from colleagues at, at Darsbury Laboratory as well. We run the computational science and engineering with the CSE team, which is the more in-depth work with scientists doing training and long-term support of software and um, helping users get their their, their um, applications running efficiently and we also host the hardware hardware the machine is is hosted just outside of Edinburgh uh, a place called the advanced computing facility so here's a picture of, of Archer um, actually this is just slightly pre it it's a recent upgrade but it gives you an impression what it looks like and it's hosted as I said the EPCC's ACF the advanced computing facility which is about eight miles south of Edinburgh so in a nutshell what is Archer? Archer is the UK National Supercomputing Service and it's the hardware budget is about just over £40 million pounds over a four-year period. The hardware itself is based on Cray, the Cray XC30 um, system. I uh, have a bunch of nodes. We'll explain in more detail what that means. Each node is built off of a couple of Intel Ivory Bridge uh, processors which have 12 cores they're relatively standard high-end but relatively standard processors um, each mem node has 64 gigabytes some have 128 but in total we have almost 5,000 nodes 4,920 and you multiply that by 24 you'll see that Archer in total has 100 over 118,000 individual computing cores and these are linked by a network and we'll come back to this but it's a high performance network specifically designed by Cray for, for large parallel supercomputers called Ares. The software, we have a bunch of development environments, uh, three suites of compilers, a lot of parallel libraries and some debugging and performance analysis tools. We'll cover them in a bit more detail later on. Storage. Um, slash home is a standard home file system which you log on to. It's not accessible on the compute nodes. We'll come back to what that means later on. But it's for your source code and critical files because it is backed up. And there's a, there's over 200 terabytes of that. For um, for actual data storage and management, we have the work slash work system, which is a, a parallel file system called Lustre. It's very high performance. It's not backed up, um, but it has a very large capacity of, of more than four petabytes. And for longer term storage, there's something called the research, 
research data facility, the RDF, which is a, a different file system. It's, it's the uh, IBM GPFS. But the important point is that's where you would put uh, data for longer term storage. It's a very large capacity there. So typically you, you store your source code and such like on home. You actually do all your day to day running and work in slash work and any and, and data analysis there. And any files you really need for longer term storage, you might move to the RDF. Just briefly, what's it used for? I mean, this is this um, these lectures are really about how you can use Arch, just so you get some some feeling. Um, it's used by a lot of chemistry. There's a lot of very uh, well optimized and well supported parallel computational chemistry packages, which can be used for chemistry and material science. A lot of environmental work on on, on climate research and a lot of engineering. You'll see there and physics. Um, so those are the chemistry, environment, engineering, physics are the, are the four main areas. Um, and a reasonable amount of life sciences work as well. Just a summary, um, Archer is a Cree XC30 system. The processors it uses are fairly standard Intel processors. Um, two per node, 24 cores in a single shared memory Linux uh, operating system. Most nodes have 64 gigabytes. And these nodes themselves aren't aren't particularly unique. We have a lot of them, but they're fairly similar to what you might see on other HPC systems. What differentiates Archer and makes it um, um, usable at very large scale is the is the airy switch, the Cray interconnect, optimized for very large parallel jobs. Um, it's fit standard to use. What I mean by that is, is you don't have to do anything special to use the switch. It's just there. Your parallel programs won't use it, but it gives you very good performance. We have a lot of storage in, in, on our high-performance file system. We've got four petabytes of, of slash work. Software is, is a range of, of standard Intel and GNU software, and also we have Cray-specific compilers. And the compute nodes, which is really the, the large back end of, of Archer, you access through something called PBS, Portable Batch System, and we'll cover that in the, in the upcoming lectures. So that's the end of this lecture, and now we have two longer lectures, one covering sort of hardware um, issues and the other coming, uh, covering software issues on, on Archer.